What's up guys, Take James here. I know a few of you have been waiting for me to release this video, so here it is. In this video, I will show you guys how to add more ROMs, more emulators, and more apps onto your Pocket Go 2. So there's kind of two methods to this video. You can either add these apps to an external SD card, just like this one I have right here. Obviously the main internal SD card is down here, and then the secondary SD card will go in the slot down here. So you can either use the external SD card method, and you can transfer the apps from this SD card onto this SD card or you can use software on your Windows computer to find the hidden Linux partition which contains the emulator and app folders on the main SD card that this thing uses. Now to start off this video I'm just going to use the external micro SD card method. I will be showing you guys the other method later in this video. So what we need to do is get a basically any micro SD card. doesn't really matter what size. It just depends um, how much apps you want to like copy across. For me 16 gigabyte is more than enough. So what you want to do is get your micro SD card get some kind of adapter, go and connect it to your computer and I will show you guys what to do next. So let's start off with the second SD card method. Make sure your second SD card is connected to your computer. You just want to look for it in the file explorer. We're going to right click it. We are going to go down to properties and we just want to make sure that the file system is FAT32. Now if yours is not FAT32, what you actually want to do is back up your files and then you want to format it. So right click, go down to format, um, make sure you choose FAT32, allocation size, you can leave that as default. We're going to click on start, click on OK and wait, just wait for to format and then once it's finished it will say format complete click on ok and we can actually close this box and there you go our sd card is now formatted so now we need to go to the link in the description or i might link this in the comments and we need to get the emulators and the kind of like homebrew apps so this GCW0 website has all of the downloads for the homebrew apps and emulators that work on the Pocket Go 2. There is a very, very long list. You guys can pretty much get whatever you want. And when you find something you want, so let's just say I want this game, all you have to do is just click on download and it will download that OPK file. So simply go through this list and select all of the OPK files that you want. We've got Atari emulators, we've got arcade emulators, Game Boy, Game Boy Color. There's pretty much every emulator you will need, Game Boy Advance, and Super Nintendo, um, NES, Sega stuff. You guys can scroll through and you can find all of the stuff you want. As I said, literally just click download on every single thing you want and it will actually save everything to your downloads folder. It also has like hardware test stuff like system apps as well. So yeah, massive list of programs. Make sure to go and check it out and just get all of the emulators and kind of home apps that you want. So here in my downloads folder, here are all of the home apps that I actually wanted to get. As you can see, I just got pretty much all of the best ones. I know some of these Game Boy Advance emulators are better than the ones that were installed on the previous firmware. I also created a ROMs folder. To do this, all you have to do, right click new folder, simply call it ROMs, and inside is where you put all your ROMs. So I've got Game Boy, put my Game Boy ROMs in there, Game Boy Advance, obviously got my Game Boy Advance ROMs, Game Boy Color, and then last of all, SNES. Of course, you can add as much ROM folders as you want, and you can put in all types of different ROMs for your certain emulators. Now keep in mind that these ROMs were backed up off of my cartridges, so if you want to do that, I have videos on that on my channel, how to get ROMs from your actual cartridges, but once you've pretty much got a setup like this, so you've got your ROMs folder and all your OPKs, you just want to select everything, and we are going to drag and drop this on the SD card, depending on how much stuff you've got, shouldn't really take too long. As you can see, everything I've got right here is around 100 megabytes, which isn't really that much, so we're just going to wait to 15 seconds and when it's done we're going to put this SD card back into our Pocket Go 2 and then we're basically going to transfer all of this stuff including the ROMs onto the SD card so basically using this SD card just to transfer these files so let's go and do that and I'll show you guys how we can do it. Okay, so once we are back, make sure your Pocket Go is powered off. So what we need to do is we need to scroll across and we need to go on settings and we need to go down to power off. Now we'll just go to power off and just press A and it will actually power off your system like this. Now once your system is powered off, you want to put in your secondary micro SD card. So let's just add this in right now. It just goes in the second port. Make sure the second port is TF2 and not TF1. Okay, so once it's plugged in, we can actually power on our Pocket Go. 
So just wait for it to power on and we actually want to go onto the application section and we want to open up the Ding UX Commander. So go onto this and press A to open it. Now you're going to get two screens. So first of all, let's just set up the main SD card, basically the internal one. So you want to go up to the top here, the very top option, and you want to start pressing B. So just go to it and press B until you get to this section. And the folder that we're looking for is called Media. So just go onto Media and press A to open it. Now we're going to do exactly the same thing for the SD card, go up to the top each time, press B, do it about three times and then we're looking for the media folder. So go and select it. Now what we need to do is select SD card on the SD card size and we can see everything we have got in here. So first of all we are going to sort out all of the apps. So what you want to do is just press select on each one, just keep on pressing select and it will actually go down the entire list until you have all of them selected. So you can do all of them or as many as you want, I got quite a lot. Now we're going to scroll back over to the main SD card, we want to go into data and then we want to go into apps. Now all of these are going to be moved across to the apps folder, so scroll back over, press X, go onto move and it's basically going to move them from our SD card onto our main SD card. Now this might take some time. I don't know actually. I don't know how long this takes. I oh, there you go. It seems to have worked. I'm just going to go on yes for all if they're already on there. Basically these are the latest versions anyway. So if there is any versions on here, they might need updating. So basically going to overwrite it. We're transferring this onto this. It's very simple. And as you can see, now it's done. So the last thing on our SD card is actually the ROMs folder. And we can put that inside of the data folder as well, that should be okay. If we press select on it, and then we go up to X, and we press X, and we go on to move, it's going to say please wait, and we can move our ROMs into the data folder as well. Um, obviously you can put the ROMs in pretty much any folder you want, doesn't really matter too much, but once we've copied across all of these things, it should actually be okay. So once it's done, all we have to do from here is press select and power quickly at the same time and it's going to back you out and if we go into emulators, you can see we have got tons of stuff and then we can even scroll down because we've got so much stuff on here. We've even got games, um, setting stuff, I don't know, I added loads of random stuff and you guys can see everything. Let's try a Game Boy game. I did get some Game Boy Advance games so why not one of those. Go into data, ROMs, Game Boy Advance and let's see, does it actually work? As you can see, the games work perfectly fine. And before there was an issue where you couldn't play Game Boy Advance games in um, like full screen, but now you can. And um, the volume is still very loud for some reason, so maybe I'll have to look into that. But there you go. Now I'm going to show you guys the second method for transferring across your emulators and ROMs. So for the second part, basically installing them on the SD card using the software so we can access the Linux partition. What you have to do is obviously take out the main SD card. We won't be needing the internal SD card anymore. So just go and make sure it's powered off. Take out the main SD card. Now you want to get your SD um, adapter and we're basically going to connect this to our computer. But there is some software we need to get. So if you guys don't like installing software, the extra SD um, way is pretty much the best. But I'm going to show you guys how to do it anyway. Anyway. So I guess this is the part two if you want to use your official SD card and view the Linux partition so we can add our ROMs without having to use a backup SD card. So this software is called Disk Genius, it's completely free and it works on Windows computers and what it lets you guys do is view Linux partitions but on a Windows PC. So I'm on the official website right now. If you guys want to get it, all you have to do is just click on the free download button right in the middle of the page. I've already got it installed. So if I go ahead and open it up, this is pretty much what it looks like. Now as soon as I plugged in my SD card, it did actually appear and it's called Generic Mass Storage 30 Gigabytes. So it lets us view two partitions on here. We've got Disk D and then we've also got Disk E. Now on Disk E, this is the one where we can view the ROMs folder and the apps folder. So these are the files that were missing before and we can now add to them. Also in the apps folder, if you double click on it, if you guys do want to add your apps in, all you have to do is go to your downloads folder and simply drag and drop them across. It's as easy as that. Now once you finish playing your game, all you have to do is press start and it will basically bring you back out and you can pretty much launch everything. Now it doesn't really matter where you put your ROMs folder, I mean it is pretty much up to you. Um, but you can put it in the data folder, in some random folder. I just put it inside of data because I knew from there I would be able to find it every time. And you can just load your games up just like that. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. As I said, I know quite a lot of you are waiting. Sorry for the delay, but I was just kind of busy with other stuff. But yeah, hopefully I'm going to be able to bring out more 
more videos on this fairly soon. And that's also another trick, press power and select and you can pretty much just back out of everything. Obviously we've got our games on here like Doom and stuff like that. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like, leave a subscribe if it helped. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.